Coogan Cassius IFL TV MTK Global. We're in London. Bob Aram's in town. It must be a big fight. Yeah, it is a big fight. And uh, we got the guy going to show everybody uh, his talents. He's uh, extraordinarily talented, as you know. Vasil Lomachenko, just a joy to watch. Now, I remember talking to you before this fight was done, and there was a little bit of doubt whether this fight would happen specifically on this date, wasn't there? Yeah, it was. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, we pushed through. Uh, we made the deal with Eddie, and uh, we selected uh, this date. It's a good date, the 31st of August. Absolutely. Um, obviously, I did want to ask you about uh, Kovalev's win over Anthony Yard. Bob, over in Russia over last weekend. Uh, what did you make of it? Well, you know, uh, I think Yard needs a new trainer. That's what I make of it. I mean, Yard, I thought, performed extraordinarily well. But, you know, it was like a guy in there who was a good talent who had no clue. Uh, you know, a couple of things. One, uh, he had never gone more than eight rounds, I don't think. And so now he's in his first 12-round fight, and he doesn't know uh, how much gas he has in the tank. And the fact that he didn't spar in preparing for the fight is really an indictment of the trainer. Uh, I think if Yardy had been better prepared and had the confidence that he could go 12 <laughs> rounds, he could very well have won that fight. Mm. Like you said, he had his moment in that eighth round uh, where he nearly had Kovalev out of there, Bob. Well, it, uh, yeah, but again, it wasn't only the eighth. He started in the seventh. He took over the fight in the seventh, and in the eighth, you're right, he had Kovalev out. Uh, and uh, he didn't have the uh, gas in his tank to finish him. And, uh, and then from the ninth round on, Kovalev suddenly uh, came back and took over. Uh, you, know, you can't win a fight like that without having a, uh, a pattern uh, of how you're gonna fight. In other words, fighting Kovalev, you need a jab to match his jab. And, and then that would set up more body punches which Kovalov is vulnerable to. Mm. Um, just kind of going a little bit, <coughs> excuse me, off topic. Um, Joshua and Ruiz was announced in Saudi Arabia um, for the 7th of December. What were your initial thoughts on that fight happening in Saudi Arabia? Well, Bob? I mean, I, I'm happy that the fight is happening. Whether Saudi Arabia is a good venue for it or not is in the eyes of the beholder. And to a large extent, uh, it's a moral question. And I'm not going to preach morality to anybody. I mean, that's something that we all have to decide for ourselves. Uh, I'm happy that the fight is happening. And it should be a very interesting fight. And what I'm predicting, it's the same result as the first fight. You believe that Ruiz will win again? Yeah, the wrong guy for Joshua to fight. Joshua is stationary kind of guy, and if you come in and you can take a punch and you got fast hands and you can put pressure on him, he's in trouble. Bob, um, just moving on to Tyson Fury now. Obviously, the last time we spoke in Belfast, it was just about to be confirmed. Um, it has been confirmed now that he'll fight Otto Wallin on the 14th of September at the T-Mobile Arena. So, yeah, talk to me about the decision for Tyson to fight Wallin. Well, you know, he has to stay busy being Tyson uh, before he fights Wilder. That fight's not going to happen until early next year. So this is a fight that's necessary. Uh, one requirement that Tyson had is that it be a big guy because Wild is a big guy. And so we got him the best available guy. Wallen is a very, very decent heavyweight. We'll give him a good fight, I think better than Schwarz did. And we'll see what happens. If you would take a, a guess to where potentially the Wilder Fury rematch could happen, what part of America is that most likely to happen? 
in Vegas. That's in Vegas. a Vegas fight. Yeah. yeah. Probably in the T-Mobile back again. It's got 20,000 seats, and it's clearly be an easy seller. Is there a possibility that Tyson could fight again after September before the end of the year? No. No, definitely not. Definitely not. Okay. Because it was talked about that he could potentially have two fights. These are the two fights. Yeah. He had one in April and one this one. Can you tell us anything about anyone else in your stable updates with any of your well, other fights? Uh, yeah, we're putting together a big card. Uh, well, we have first before that, October, we have that great uh, light heavyweight unification fight, Bozic and Betabio. Yeah. That should be a real bond burner. Uh, uh, we have uh, Jamel Herring defending his title, Burchelt defending his title. Uh, but the next big fight after October will be uh, Madison Square Garden. Bud Crawford will defend his welterweight title. Uh, Comey will fight Lopez for the IBF lightweight title with a chance to, to win it to meet Lomachenko. Uh, and then finally, uh, Mick Conlon will be fighting on that card. And that's in December? December 14th, the night of the Heisman Trophy presentation. That traditionally is the biggest night for an audience in boxing because uh, the Heisman is awarded to the best college football player. It has a massive audience, most of whom, or many of whom, uh, stay to watch the boxing. Mm. I'll have to get over to New York for that one. Yeah, it's going to be great. Bob Aaron, thank you very much for talking to IFM TV, and uh, we'll definitely catch up with you again soon. My pleasure. Stop, man.